Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. That's right. Second Thessalonians. That's what we're talking about. Can we retaliate? No. What about justice? Yes. Okay, that's what we're talking about today. We're talking about God's justice. So what did you think of the message, Laura, that pastor spoke on? 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verses 5 through 12. Well, I think that we really need to be in God's word, you know, soaking it up, saturating ourselves, filling our minds yeah. with the things of the Lord. And it, it's like every part of the Bible is relevant right now. It is. You know? It is. It is. So what it says here in these verses, it says this. Paul says, it is writing to the, Thess the, church, the believers at Thessalonica, it is clear evidence of God's righteous judgment that you will be counted worthy of mm. God's kingdom. Verse five and six for which you also are suffering so they were going through stuff these believers right yeah but look what paul sa says here in verse six since it is just for god to repay with affliction those who afflict you so notice it says here god to repay and that's what we're talking right. about so we're talking about god repaying and you know uh, us as christians waiting on that for from him towards those who afflict us. Right. That's what the Bible is teaching right here. And it says, and to give relief to you who are afflicted along with us. This will take place at the revelation of the Lord Jesus from with, with his powerful angels. So that's verse 7. So um, Paul is saying God will repay those that cause harm. Yes. Definitely. And I really liked this reference to Romans that Pastor Joe mentioned, Romans 12, 19 through 21. I'm going to read it. This is the NIV. Do not take revenge, my dear friends, but leave room for God's wrath. Mm -hmm. For it's written, it is mine to avenge. I will repay, says the Lord. On the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something so, to wait, drink. Stop. So not just wait for God to repay actually do something good to them? Yes. That's the Christian way? In doing this, you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Overcome this is the word of the Lord. <laughs> this is the word. <laughs> overcome evil with good. Right. So we like to... Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. That's right. what it says in the Old Testament. Yes. Paul is saying right there, I really love that verse, right? Repay no one evil for, for evil. Yes. So uh, it's kind of like when Jesus said, turn the other cheek, he's sort of saying, you have to be the one in control of what's happening, right? Turn the other cheek and get them a Sprite. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> Give but them a glass of water. What I heard about that, and I heard a good teaching on that one time, it was about because to to, to when someone slapped you, it was like really um, offensive. Offensive. So it's mm -hmm. to not give place to that offense, right? Right. To, to be the bigger or, or stronger person, to rise above the situation. And so that's sort of, and, and when we leave room for God to work, that is good because it's his job. Yes. It's not our job to repay because we don't have all of the data. We don't have all of the mm -hmm. information. We don't and, know the person's heart. And they there's that saying, which I find very true, hurt people hurt people. Yes, yes. And so a lot of times when someone's having a bad day, I mean, with you working at a school, you can see disgruntled people, you know, mm -hmm. roaming around on the campus or dropping their kids off. And that trickles into that child's attitude in the yes. classroom and so forth. So sometimes when a kid is bullying, for example, it's because they're repeating that behavior that they've seen. Maybe their brother yeah, bullies so them or their dad, ask you know. You this. What's the difference between retaliation, right, and justice? Because you work in the legal field. Right. So what's, if there is a, a court order for yes. someone to you know, stay away from this person in a mm -hmm. hundred feet or whatever. Right, right. Um, but the other person, they're like, no, I'm going to retaliate. Right. But there's an order in place. Right. Because that's the justice behind it, right? The order. Yes. But if you take it into your own hands to retaliate, what are the consequences? You can be in trouble. You can get arrested. You can get um, fines. There will be penalties. So you might think 
on your own, I'm going to do X, Y, Z, but we're supposed to let the authorities step in. You call the police. who's the authority? Who is the... Who is the one that is ruler and judge over all of us? God. God, God Almighty. So Jesus we have Christ. to leave it up to him. Yes. I understand that. And today we are fighting for certain, um, you might say, rights or for, for, actually for our rights to not be taken, some would say. So I think that there's sort of this fine line, right? Definitely. You I know? think that we are living in a day and age when people are bitter they're you know Upset. covid fatigued yeah. covid fatigued they're bummed sure. out they're bummed. um discouraged and so you know when you mentioned my work i remember this one time i had this case and it was a divorce situation and it took forever it was like a weeks and weeks long okay, trial be careful. we're a lot we're this is public info so yes right no names Susie smith and steve okay smith. so what happened so what ended up happening is my client, who was the wife, she won. And so at the end of the case, the gentleman came up to me and said, congratulations, Ms. Gonzalez, you won for your client, which was his ex-wife. And I looked at him and I shook my head. I said, nobody wins in divorce. Everybody hurts. Yeah. You hurt. She hurt. The kids hurt. Everybody hurts. It's not a competition. So when when the Lord says vengeance is mine, when when somebody's been hurt... Let's say, you know, you steal, somebody steals $5,000 from you. Okay? Yes, yes. And you want to retaliate and repay, revenge. Yeah. If you get the money back, you're still hurt because yes. they robbed you. Yes. So that's why we, we give it to the Lord mm -hmm. and we let him do his job. The, I am encouraged by Revelation 18, 1 through 8, evil, sin, and death will be conquered one day. Yes. Evil, sin, and death. So good. Right? Look what it says here in speaking of the great fall of Babylon. They don't really know who Babylon is in the book of Revelation. Some have some sort of um, ideologies about who is Babylon, right? Mm -hmm. But in the book of Revelation, Babylon is sort of a metaphor too for Rome, right? Because it was written during or that time. Or in the world frame. system. Or in the some world system, people right? Say that. Mm -hmm. The world system. So it says this. Um, Which verse? Verses. Uh, I won't read it all because of time, but Revelation 18, 1 through 8, you could read it on your own. But it says here, for her sins are piled up to heaven and God has remembered wow. her crimes. Pay her back the way she also paid and double it Whoa. according to her works in the cup in which she mixed a double portion for her, Right. As much as she glorified and indulged in her sensual and excessive ways, give her that much torment and grief. For she says in her heart, I sit as a queen. I am not a widow. In other words, you don't need a husband. Mm. And I will never see grief. For this reason, her plagues will come in just one day. Death and grief and famine. She will be burned up with fire because the Lord God who judges her is Strong. mighty. Strong. Wow. So... Those with the rebellious hearts, those who we feel, well, they're never going to get punished, right? We have to be big picture Christians. We have, to, we have to see down the road. And, and I think that when we read in Revelation 2 about the judgments, the new heaven and the new earth, that should give us hope, right? Yes. And Paul says here in verse 7 that the uh, Thessalonians, let me try to go back real quick. He says... That and you will give they the Thessalonican believers they were given relief to you who are afflicted along with us. This will take place at the revelation of the Lord Jesus from heaven with his powerful angels. There will be relief. Right. Right. God will ultimately execute justice. And when I think of that as a big picture, and I think of myself like God's gonna really handle it one day. Amen. Like this is the reality. Yes. Right, he will handle it. And look at Revelation 20, 11 through 15. This is encouraging too, right? Then I saw a great white throne and one seated on it. Earth and heaven fled from his presence and no place was found for them. I also saw the dead, the great, the small, standing before the throne and the books were opened. Another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged according to the works by what was written in their books. 
The dead wow. raised in the last final white mm -hmm. throne, they're judged according to their works. Right. Then the sea gave up the dead and were in it, and the death and Hades gave up the dead that were in them. Each one was judged according to their works. Death and Hades were thrown into the lake of fire. This is the second lake, the second death, excuse me, the lake of fire. And anyone whose name was not found written in the book of life was thrown into the lake of fire. This is heavy. It is heavy. And I think that when we get a proper understanding of death being conquered, sin being conquered, and evil being conquered, it can give us more freedom to focus on what God is calling us to do right now. I think a lot of people struggle. Which is, important. which is, tell people about Jesus. Amen. So their names are written in the right. book, right? Yes. So that they won't have a rebellious heart here and now. Yes. I think that people struggle with so-and-so got away with it. Yes. I, I hear that from my clients. And Paul is saying right here, they're, they're not, not going to get away with yes. it. And that's what all those revelation verses, they do encourage. Because, you know, we're getting on 20 years of 9-11. Next week will be 20 yes. years. And so I just always grieve for New York because grandpas, aunties, moms, dads, brothers, best friends, yes. firefighters, you know, they, they died on that terrible, mm. horrible day. And so we look at Afghanistan, we look at Taliban, Al-Qaeda, ISIS, all these organizations, and we think they're getting away with it. I mean, the our humanity yeah. thinks yeah, that. Yeah, but you know, some of them are captured, some of them are killed. But I remember, I think it was you told me one time, God takes no death in the pleasure of the wicked. Yeah, right. Doesn't it say that? Yeah, he takes no, uh, he doesn't rejoice he, when no, the wicked die. No, no. because... God's desire is that everybody repent. should repent and all should come right. to the knowledge of the Lord, right? Yes. How does that scripture go? He's not willing that any should perish. But all come to repentance. Amen. Yeah. yeah. And so I think that um, it's really awesome to just know that no one's going to get away with right. it. Right. Right. We're Absolutely. thankful that as Christians we have righteous standing because of what Jesus did and we recognize that. Right. We're thankful that we can practice forgiveness, grace, right? We show each other grace. We have mercy from God, right? We, we know, have mercy. Yes, We've experienced yes. it firsthand. Yeah. And so I think that a lot of people, maybe you're a Christian and you're not Christian and you're watching this, you just think that God is some puppet master trying to control everything and that he's just going to, you know, send people to hell. But that's not the case. Right. That's right? not an accurate description of God. God no. is a father. He's our creator. And he made a way so we don't have to go to yeah, hell. Yeah, and C.S. Lewis said, right, there's a two type of people when you die. They say, well, they say to God, thy will be done, right? Or God says to them, thy will be done. Right. Right? And that's... Right. Who's God? Him or me? Yeah. I did, yeah. So... That's really it. I just want to encourage people today to realize that, you know, God is the one that will make the wrong things right Amen. He eventually. Sure will. Mm -hmm. And if you're right now living the wrong way, get right with God. Yes. So that you can live right right now. And live right for all eternity. And, you know, I think that a lot of pastors and a lot of teachers and even us, we talk about the vertical and then the horizontal. Yes. The vertical, when, when we know that we've accepted Christ, our sins are that we're scarlet or now white as snow, like it says in Isaiah, then that affects our horizontal, our relationship yes, with our spouse, so with our coworkers, with our children, mm -hmm. with people in the community. But we will get wronged. These Thessalonican believers, they were awesome. Yeah. And, this and they got hurt and they got persecuted. And Paul's saying, but let it go. Yeah. Give, Look Pastor what he Joe says said, right leave them in the holy hands of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Go ahead. And look at what verse 8 says. When he takes vengeance with flaming fire on those who do not know God and on those who don't obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, they will pay the penalty of eternal destruction from the Lord's presence. Wow. I don't want that for anybody. No. That's terrible. It is terrible. Imagine never being able to pray. 
or just never knowing that peace, that light. Jesus said, I'm the light of the world. Yeah. This is outer darkness. And you from know? his and his glorious strength on that day when he comes to be glorified with his saints. So we know this is a sober message, you guys, but we encourage you to just, you know, dig deep into your Bible. You know, Chuck referenced Revelation. He's been reading Revelation on his own. We want to just be close to the Lord, just yes. soaking him in. I mean, what about if we just put our phones down, turn the TV off, just spend some time with Jesus? You're going to feel yes. refreshed. The news just always yes. makes you bummed out. It does. But spending time with Jesus, you, you're lifted up. And I think that just if we be in prayer about what let's focus on what's really important right now and i really love go back full circle to that romans verse yes. how do you overcome evil with good with good with good that's rad that's thank awesome. you guys for joining us thank you for listening um chuck and laura let's talk about it we're here on fridays we know that you guys are busy on fridays you're up in the club maybe <laughs> no i'm just playing oh they're closed because covid oh yeah or you're, maybe I, <laughs> so or you could be at the gym or whatever or hanging out with your family but anyways take take some time to listen and we would appreciate it um friday nights cmontclair.com has all of our social media platforms god bless you guys thank you guys